Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another 6.5 podcast, and we are doing Virtual Supercomputing 22, and I'm here with Jonathan Seckler, who runs Dell Server and Solutions. Jonathan, how are you? Hey, Pat, it's good to talk to you again. Doing great. I know it's been it's been pretty awesome. I think you and I have known each other possibly 20 years, yep. maybe longer. But uh, isn't it a, just such a great industry where you just people pop up and they're at different companies, maybe have different jobs. But um, it's uh, I love uh, seeing people and working with people that I worked with for so long ago. Uh, but anyways, it's great to see you here. And while you and I won't be at Supercomputing 22, no, we, we are here virtually, and we're here to talk about some awesome stuff that you're doing with uh, with PowerEdge. And you know, Dell has a really storied history in supercomputing. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be supercomputing was these big national labs, and then the the definition really expanded into drug companies, energy companies, designers anybody who needed high performance computing. So, uh, but we're here to talk about AI and probably the best place to start because, you know, Dell is so connected to its customers is, what are some of the key issues with AI that you're trying to solve? Yeah, you know, Pat, that's a, that's a great uh, starter question, I think. So you, you think about the supercomputing audience and I think for them, uh, artificial intelligence is a is a no-brainer. They it's part of every high-performance computing uh, solution. Every every su supercomputing cluster out there is already doing and leveraging all the techniques and and capabilities of of our, of all the different various you know artificial intelligence type techniques. But um, what we're uh, really focused on at Dell is how do we bring that to the masses, right? How right. do we make it more available? And um, one of the things that we learned a couple of years ago is that everyone kind of gets stuck in this uh, prototype uh, test phase and they don't know how to get, you know, get beyond it. Uh, and uh, they also, I think there's a lot of risk or angst involved in, you know, actually leveraging these technologies because they're, they're new, they're emerging. No one's really, you know, sure uh, how the things are going to go. Uh, as a matter of fact, so uh, what we did at Dell, for example, is we did a really interesting study where we uh, looked at companies that are being really successful using artificial intelligence in their business today versus everybody else. And, and, and we're, what we're finding is that you know, successful companies who, uh, who use AI have, I think, three or four things that are really uh, in common that we think we can, we can help with. Uh, one is they're you know, number one, I think, is they're not afraid to lean in, right? They are leveraging the biggest data sets uh, that they can. They're looking for ways to bring insights out of all of that information. And um, they make it available, uh, or I should say they, they use those data sets. But even more importantly is they've got a lot of people using them, right? Uh, one of my favorite, um, uh, you know, examples is when we talked about a Dell world, like Nature Fresh Farms, maybe not the biggest customer in the world, but they took all of the data around growing tomatoes and peppers and they make it available to all their growers. And now, you know, they, they've got to this situation where not only are they, you know, improving yields and improving the profitability of the farm, but they're making it easier for the growers to do their jobs. Like they don't have to be there to see how much water you know, a particular uh, row of tomatoes needs, they actually can, you know, they can see it online through the data and, and make the ask to have the, you know, to have the, the sprinkler, you know, turn on or, or, or increase the water, uh, you know, uh, distribution or whatever as it is. So I think that's like a really um, interesting area where, you know, people who are leveraging AI are doing it in a big, big way. They're, they're, they're changing the way their business works in order to, to leverage the, the data uh, that they have. Well, I love it. I mean, yeah, I, I'm just going to say, you know, Dell making things more accessible. I mean, literally, that's what the company's done for 30 years, right? Yep. Uh, it leads on on various things. But one thing it leads on is bringing it to everybody. And you always know something is a market when Dell gets involved, right? Because <laughs> yeah. Dell doesn't mess around uh, when, when, he, when it 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 recommends things to its customers, it works. So anyway, just a little aside here. So yeah. one characteristic was leaning in. Uh, what's the next? Yeah. 
Le leading in is one. I think number two uh, that we're looking at is that customers who are really successful at AI, um, they are um, leveraging their own infrastructure. And, and I know that sounds, uh, it might sound a little self-serving for, for Dell to point that out, but there is a real trend where the cloud is perfect for testing and development and small scale piloting of projects. But when you're going with all of that data and you're, you're making all of those kinds of decisions, you really need to control the infrastructure that it runs on. And, and so bigger companies certainly, but also bigger projects tend to run on, you know, uh, not just a hosted infrastructure, but something that, that, that's a little bit more tightly managed. So we're seeing that uh, uh, being a big, a big part of the, uh, of the equation. Um, so obviously that's important for us um, because uh, we're going to be announcing some new servers today uh, at uh, Supercompute. So uh, I'll talk, tell you about those in a sec. And then if I can, just to close out the thought, the yeah. third thing that I, we see all customers doing or a lot of customers doing is, uh, let me think here. So they're, uh, they're using big data sets. They're using their own infrastructure. And I think the third thing that they're doing is they're making like maximum utilization of all the incremental capabilities that the infrastructure can provide. You know, um, the reality is, is that all of the new technologies, all of the new software programming models, all of the new AI frameworks and things that are coming up really are designed for uh, GPUs and FPGAs or, or alternative, you know, compute infrastructure that you don't just get from uh, a uh, uh, you know from a from a standard industry ser server, so you do need special infrastructure for that as well. And in particular, you know you're seeing the need for you know uh, six or eight GPUs or even more uh, as people start really uh, digging into the data that they have. You know, it, it's funny. One argument I'm glad we're not having anymore in the industry is this whole hybrid versus public cloud thing. Yeah. I mean, when even AWS showed up with on-prem infrastructure, you knew we're not going to have that uh, discussion anymore. And there are certain scenarios and use cases that I think the industry is very comfortable with uh, when it comes to on-prem infrastructure. And one of those is latency. But the other thing is, there's a cost to moving data that goes right. back and forth. In fact, moving data up and down can be one of the biggest, can be bigger than the cost of compute uh, out there. And obviously you don't have that with uh, with on-prem uh, infrastructure, but hey, let's get into the announcements here. So right. Right. Uh, Supercomputing 22 in our backyard, well, previous backyard, okay, maybe it's three hours away, but, um, you making some big announcements here. So what are you what are you coming out with? You talked about a server here. Yep, we talked about a server, but uh, really what we're talking about is uh, three servers. So um, we have uh, taken the PowerEdge um, XE line. XE is a, a a model designator at Dell that stands for you know an extended uh, range or extreme range of capability. It's it's where we put a lot of our alternative form factors, and uh, what we're really focusing uh, today around is how we can deliver that accelerated uh, GPU enabled experience in a PowerEdge infrastructure in a PowerEdge server. And so we're announcing three new servers today. Um, the first one is the PowerEdge XE9680. Okay. It is Dell's first eight GPU um, NVIDIA, uh, you know, su support for NVIDIA servers. We're going to support both the latest uh, NVIDIA H100 Tensor Core uh, GPUs, but also the uh, existing uh, A100 Tensor Core GPUs as well in that, uh, in that infrastructure. Uh, so that'll be the first server. The second server that I want to announce is going to something even a little bit more different than that. It's the PowerEdge XE9640. Uh, so this is a four GPU server. But the interesting thing about it is that we're actually uh, not going to be using GP, uh, NVIDIA in this one. This is a Intel GPU uh, accelerated server. So we'll be using the Intel uh, I think it's the Intel uh, Max GPU series yeah. uh, in it. It's going to be the first all Intel uh, accelerated Dell solution uh, in the market. And uh, on top of it, uh, it's going to be a, uh, the first server, I think, or one of the first servers we're bringing to market that is uh, completely uh, liquid cooled uh, for, the, for energy efficient operation, right? So we'll 
you know, this is something we're seeing more and more in the data center, whereas, you know, power goes up, performance goes up, but, you know, how do you, how do you get rid of that heat, right? And uh, so this will be a, a, our, uh, a liquid cold solution from Dell. No, I love it. Uh, I'm imagining this big beast, eight H100s just yep. uh, cranking away. And, you know, as you know, HPC used to be a game of flops and not AI. Yep. But what we found is that AI allows much more efficient workloads uh, to actually right. work on the right data. And heck, you, you see that in financial institutions, in, in energy, and you also see, you're now seeing it in the big national labs. So it's super exciting. Yeah. And I'm so glad to hear that you're using uh, the Intel Max because first of all, um, they showed uh, a lot with hype, with uh, hyperscalers, the, the public cloud mm -hmm. folks. And I was like, come on, Intel, let's bring this to, uh, let's bring this on-prem here. So I'm super excited about that. And quite frankly, uh, competition is good uh, for yep. for everybody yeah, yeah. and the the entire uh, industry. So, you know, I have to ask. You know, I love tech. I mean, I just you know, I just wanted to growl when I heard about the the four H one hundreds. But who? Sorry, eight GPUs, eight, eight not four. Right. Just totally uh, uh, doing your cutting you short here so that's the third server i don't have really we haven't got to that one yet oh yeah. sorry I, I just interrupted you go ahead i'm just excited about no, all these it's gpus always, it's exciting yeah. the, the third server that we're doing is a like you said is, is it going to be a uh uh, uh power edge xe uh 8640 so different okay. different number there it's uh, a follow-on from the original power edge xe 8540 that we announced uh, a little bit over a year ago this is going to be also uh two uh, it's a you know, dual socket CPU, but four uh, H100 uh, NVIDIA GPUs, uh, in, you know, embedded in the system. Uh, and this one is also, I believe, is uh, uh, air cooled, but with some with a, the, the ability to do liquid assist for, uh, you know, for as an option. Cool. I just keep getting ahead of myself here, Jonathan. No, you're so doing excited. good. You're setting me up. So who needs eight H100 GPUs on the XC9680? I mean. I'm sure it plays, you know, a mean game of crisis, but but I'm sure it does. <laughs> I'm sure it can play crisis, but w what else can this do? So the the beauty of this is that one of the fastest growing areas in AI is these large data set, you know, uh, 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 projects, I guess. And one of the coolest projects that we're seeing out there that I, I'm really excited about is this idea of digital twin technology. Yeah. You've heard about this digital twin deployments? Absolutely. You know, the first time I mean, it I, is the um killer it's it's probably the it is most the killer, killer app. Yeah. iot app for 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 it which is for for the industry uh but it also is very usable when you're trying to digitize something in the physical that's in the physical world i i was really astounded when i started digging into this like originally you know digital twin we we looked i think a lot of people were looking at it in the you know uh not in consequentially in the healthcare business right yeah. being able to see healthy versus sick but um, I will say NVIDIA has, has got some great demonstrations uh, where they're showing, you know, how you can use digital twins to model a manufacturing facility and improve the productivity and the safety of the operation, you know, or uh, you can use it for, uh, you know, in retail even, see how to, you know, and, and to simulate traffic flows and things like that. So as you said, an IoT, a great IoT app, you're, you're really able to, uh, to do, to do the most with it and, and things like that. You really need uh, this incredible uh, requirement to visualize what you're looking, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the arena or the area that you're trying to uh, right. twin. And uh, it, I think it looks, uh, it's really important to, you know, see solutions like this in the market. Yeah. And by the way, it's also real time, which means you're crunching an time. enormous amount of data and you have to show a 3d representation of what you're you're looking at which requires a lot of horsepower as well so jonathan you know i get all excited about eight gpus in a in a chassis which uh draws gets a lot of work done uh mm -hmm. draws more power than my notebook but but so it this might sound a little like talking out of both sides of my mouth but i do want to talk about sustainability uh which is yeah. a huge topic in the data center uh, today in probably four or five different ways that, that I can think about. But I'd like for you to talk about how are you addressing 
uh, sustainability in, in these new servers. Now, that's a great issue or question. And it's something that I've heard too. I think every customer conversation I've had in 2022, the topic of what are you doing to improve the energy efficiency of what's right. uh, of your solutions or what are you doing to improve the sustainability, the environmental impact, you know, to reduce the environmental impact that, that you have on, on the world uh, is coming from our customers. And I think, you know, we look at it in a number of, there, there, we have a big, you know, some big uh, uh, kind of work streams that we look at. You know, we look at what we can do with hardware in order to, uh, you know, improve the energy efficiency of what we do so that even though we're, we're definitely drawing more power per unit, then ultimately for the same, you know, uh, to solve the same problem, you need less units, right? So you're, you, you know, you're going to get to a net uh, reduction of power per solution, so, so to speak, right? Uh, I think that's one thing that's going on. Similarly, in that hardware area, we're doing a lot of things to ensure that we're operating sustainably, right? We're using recycled materials, uh, whether that's plastic or steel, even even recycled magnets, you know, sometimes, you know, because those are uh, a rare earth resource, uh, you know, as we move forward. Um, and, uh, you know, all of our, uh, you know, shipping materials also are recycled in that sense as well. So w there's a lot going on there. On the other side, on the software side, um, we use, uh, the, uh, we, we've just updated the uh, Open Manage Power Manager, which is our power monitoring and management software for the Dell powered series. And one of the things we've added to that is the ability to monitor, you know, carbon tracking, uh, to monitor energy efficiency, et cetera, so that you can, uh, you know, manually take care of that inside your, inside your data center or inside your environment, I should say. You know, not everyone has a data center anymore, but you still have infrastructure somewhere. So, you know, you, you need to uh, uh, ensure that you're, you're, you're being as energy, uh, you know, being as efficient as possible. And uh, this all kind of kind of rolls up. I've got to throw this one last piece in and to say, talk about how important it is that we can be able to do that. And as a result, we're able to um, offer uh, some level of certification uh, to our customers to, to uh, you kind of uh, prove uh, the value of what we're doing with EPEAT certification for all our new servers, including Silver EPEAT in some models as well. So Jonathan, I'm really happy on an industry basis that that our view of sustainability has matured. Um, I think it yeah. it used to be uh, it used to look to me like a one-sided argument, but I think when we talk to customers, is they're looking for us to do. They're not going to pay more uh, for being more green, right. but what they want is more efficiency uh, at at the same price. And I think that's a good direction for the industry goes because. What it does is it, is it gets tech vendors, all of us, to move down the efficiency route, which uh, what you're doing is a great example of that. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think sustainability has always been and, and really should be an economic argument. It's all yeah. about how do we make our, you know, how do we reduce our costs or how do we get more efficient at what we're doing, you know, uh, in, whatever that is. And, uh, you know, I've been at Dell for 12 years or so. And I will tell you, it's it does seem like you know we've talked about fresh air, which is something to raise operating temperatures. We've talked about uh, Energy Star compliance, things like that. But um, but these days, I think the focus on you know improving uh, energy efficiency, Im you know improving little things like the airflow in a server to to improve the you know the the heat reduction, uh, you know the heat uh, transfer out of a server so that you can get more done. Uh, it all comes down to, you know, how do we help our customers save money uh, or, uh, you know, hopefully make money. You know? There we go. So. I love that. So, Jonathan, uh, congratulations on the big day. Supercomputing 22 virtual in the booth. I'm here with Jonathan Seckler, Senior Director, of Dell Server and Solutions. We are chatting AI. So I hope you'll come on again. We can talk about uh, how things are progressing. Yeah, I'd love to. And uh, make sure if you're watching this to come come by the booth and check out all of these uh, great new technology. Yeah, it would be great. So this is Pat Mord with more insights and strategy signing out for another 6.5 in the virtual booth at Supercomputing 22. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon, evening, wherever you are on the planet. Take care.